So we now move on to the topic of uh, testing hypotheses and we start uh, with the t-test. So recall from the previous lesson that um, uh, we, can, we can divide statistical inferences in two categories. One was the estimation and the second is uh, hypothesis testing that we will consider in this lesson. So uh, in contrast to the estimation where we start from the clean table, in hypothesis testing, we always have some kind of prior statement uh, about the parameter value of interest. This prior statement could come from theory. It could be some kind of prior empirical work uh, or some kind of uh, rule of thumb or, or whatever. But at least there is always some kind of prior statement about what the parameter is believed to be. And then uh, the purpose in hypothesis testing is to then, then uh, contrast this uh, prior statement with our empirical evidence and uh, then we draw a conclusion that does the empirical evidence either support this prior hypothesis or, or falsify it. Okay, but always there is some kind of prior statement about the parameter value. So there are three alternative approaches that, uh, that we will consider in this, uh, this course. I'll start in this lesson by t-test but I also want to mention that there are also other ways of testing hypotheses. So I will consider the so-called p-value in the next lesson, and we will also then consider how confidence intervals can be also utilized for, for testing hypotheses. But uh, as mentioned, we will start from the t-test. And uh, firstly, I want to briefly walk you through the, the usual type of routine in hypothesis testing. So this is also the case in t-test, but uh, it also applies to, to many other tests. So, so we will also then, uh, then use so-called f-test later in the course, and we will also consider some g-squared tests and, and so on. So in, in statistical theory, there's a lot of, lot of alternative uh, tests that can be used for testing hypotheses, and uh, this kind of classical routine applies to any, any of the tests. So I think uh, it's that, for that reason, it's good to good to start from this kind of general approach in hypothesis testing. So the first step, like I already emphasized in hypothesis testing, we need to have this kind of clear prior statement, which is referred to as the null hypothesis. And it's uh, typically denoted by capital H uh, subscript zero. And then if the null hypothesis is not true, then we need to have some uh, mutually exclusive uh, alternative hypothesis, which is uh, indicated by H1, H subscript 1. So again, this null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis must be mutually exclusive, meaning that uh, both hypotheses cannot be true at the same time. Okay, so this is, this is what, uh, what we start with, that there is some null hypothesis that we are interested in testing. So the second step, uh, Broadly, we need to have some kind of probabilistic model uh, and some necessary assumptions in order to uh, use uh, probability theory uh, in the context of regression analysis. Of course, this probabilistic model would be basically the assumptions of the of the linear regression model and uh, and the linear regression model itself. Third step is to form then some uh, test statistic that we can compute based on our observed data. So. This is the first criterion of the test statistic that we need to be able to calculate it when, when we have the data. And another prop property of it is that uh, its probability distribution, if the null hypothesis is true, should be known. Okay, so in that sense, this test statistic is kind of like a, like a indicator, in some sense a test ball that, uh, that we will use then to like, like uh, indicate that uh, that uh, does uh, does this uh, data support the null hypothesis or not and then in the fourth step uh, we use this probability model that we have specified in step two then we form the so-called acceptance regions and uh, rejection regions so then we can uh, then we can uh, and 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 this probability theory is uh, is uh, important uh, because then then we also have some kind of pre-assigned uh, probability called significance level and the significance level is this alpha that we considered in the previous lesson for this confidence interval so it's again the same alpha so given the significance level alpha we use the probability theory to construct this uh, acceptance region and and rejection region 
and then we compare these acceptance and rejection regions to this uh, test statistic S. So if this test statistic S is within the acceptance region, then it means that we accept the null hypothesis H0. If, on the other hand, uh, this test statistic S falls to the rejection region, then we reject the null hypothesis. So that, that comes to this our, our, our final, final decision. And uh, that's these two possible outcomes of the hypothesis testing. We either either accept the null hypothesis, meaning that our empirical data generally supports the null hypothesis, or we reject the null hypothesis. So in that sense, we would say that uh, that our empirical data uh, uh, is is uh, not consistent with the null hypothesis. I'll come back to the interpretation of the of this uh, hypothesis testing a little bit later. Okay, but, uh, but at this point, uh, uh, this should clarify this kind of setting of hypothesis testing. So we never say that what exactly we believe that the parameter value of interest might be. We only say that, uh, that uh, do we accept the null hypothesis or do we reject it? So it's only two possible outcomes. Okay, so the details will clarify a little bit uh, when we get to the to the specific case of of t test so at this point it's it's okay that it's relatively abstract level i just wanted to go through these steps because the same kind of routine then applies also to other types of tests and than t test so let's then get to the to the t test uh, and uh, i start with this kind of general setting that uh, that the null hypothesis uh, is uh, such that we state that uh, uh, parameter beta 2 is equal to beta asteric here i implicitly again have i have in mind the single linear regression so we are interested in testing hypotheses about the about the slope coefficient of course the everything generalizes to the to the multiple multiple linear regression equally well okay so and of course this um, this uh, beta 2 is is this unknown constant for the slope coefficient, we don't know it, we don't directly observe it, but uh, our null hypothesis makes some specific statement about this beta asteric. So, so again, this beta asteric is not something unobservable, it's actually some clear statement of what beta 2 should be. Okay, and as alternative hypothesis, then, then we say that the beta 2 is, is not equal to beta asteric. And in the general case, this is why I call it general cases that uh, this beta asteric can be anything, whatever number. It could be 10, it could be 100, it could be 0, it could be 1, whatever. It's something that just theory or empirical evidence is giving. But this is this our hypothesis that we want to test. So now the idea is, and, and the name of this test comes that we will use as the test statistic, uh, often abbreviated as a T-stat. So the test statistic uh, is uh, constructed as, uh, as uh, our uh, point estimate B2 from the regression model minus beta asteric, uh, and this difference we divide by the standard error of, of, of B2. And, uh, and uh, obviously, well, I'll show it later, this, uh, this uh, also relates to this T distribution that, uh, that we have utilized earlier to to construct the confidence interval. So, uh, so this is called T stat is the, is the test statistic that we, that we, that we, uh, that we construct for, for testing the hypothesis. Uh, notice again here that we can calculate this T statistic uh, because we can, we can estimate this uh, B2. B2 is our, this OLS estimate, standard error we have from the OLS results. And beta 2 is, is whatever null hypothesis is stating. So beta 2, sorry, beta asteric, we, we, we know because it's, it's something what the hypothesis is stating. So this is something that we, we can calculate. So then the idea is that, uh, that uh, we, we calculate this uh, acceptance region and, and uh, rejection region. I took uh, here this kind of also illustration from the, from the, uh, article by Kreinen, where this uh, idea of the acceptance uh, area and rejection area are indicated. So then we just calculate this test statistic and we check does it fall to the acceptance area 
or the rejection area. And then, then we either we accept the null hypothesis if it falls to the acceptance area, or we reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is uh, in the rejection region. That's as simple, simple as that. I think it will become more clear if you if you make some some exercises, for example, in the in the in the in the problem sets. So now to the to the probability theory a little bit. So so just to remind you that we we recall recall that we derive the confidence interval using this result that uh, that uh, that uh, if uh, if we made the standardized uh, variable b2 minus beta2 and we divide this difference by by uh, standard deviance and sigma b2 then the standardized uh, standardized variable will follow the standard normal distribution but when we replace this uh, this uh, standard deviation by the estimated standard deviation called standard error then the standardized uh, uh, statistic uh, follows the t distribution with the with n minus k degrees of freedom. When we have the single regression case, it is of course n minus two. So, so this is why this t test is is why we call it the t test. The the test statistic follows the t distribution, and uh, of course, in general, again I emphasize here that in general this beta two parameter is unknown and not directly observable. However. For testing hypothesis, we have some clear statement about what this beta 2 should be. So that's this beta asteric. So then we can always calculate what is b2 minus beta asteric and divide this difference by standard error. And if the null hypothesis is true, then this, uh, this t statistic should follow the t distribution with n minus capital K decrease of freedom. That's the idea. So this is also the, the general setting, but I will come back to now to some specific case of the t-test. So I hope that it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't confuse you. So here, the, in the general case, this uh, null hypothesis can state anything about this beta tool. But there is very important special case, and this is called the significance test. So in the CIF, when we talk about significance testing, then uh, the null hypothesis is always of the form that the beta two is equal to zero. Okay, this is why I even highlighted it with the with the red color here. So when we talk about significance testing, the null hypothesis is always stating that the beta two is equal to zero. That's important because then, of course, in that case, uh, there is no impact whatsoever with this x variable. So. In that sense, uh, when we talk about significance testing, uh, we are sort of playing uh, playing this kind of uh, uh, we are in some sense taking this kind of skeptic role that we say that okay, actually there is no impact whatsoever with our explanatory variable x. Impact is actually totally zero. There's no impact whatsoever. All this kind of uh, what our regression results show is just uh, just some uh, uh, lucky, some arbitrary strike of luck. So in that case, if we take this kind of kind of uh, skeptic role and, and state the null hypothesis that there's no impact whatsoever, beta 2 is actually equal to zero, then the test statistic uh, simplifies to the ratio between b2 and, uh, and the standard error. And in fact, this is the, the value of the t-stat that it's usually reported in the by the by the statistical software when you do regression in excel or stata or whatever software then the t stat that you actually get it's not for this kind of general case of testing hypothesis it's it's for the specific case of significance test where the null hypothesis uh, is stating that beta 2 is equal to zero of course your statistical software doesn't know that what is the what what's the null hypothesis that is being claimed so of course this beta asteric is not known that's why it's replaced by the significance test that, that beta 2 is equal to zero. So this is actually what, uh, what this t stat uh, uh, reported, for example, in Excel output is. So, so if you want to com compare to this now with this, uh, again, this using this example of hedonic model of housing market, and I have here highlighted this t stat with red color. 
So if you simply take this, uh, this uh, regression coefficient and uh, divide it by the standard error, you will get this T statistic as a result. And uh, it's it's not so directly obvious if you if you if you just look at the numbers, but if you take a, uh, take for example pocket calculator, take uh, this uh, coefficient of the size in square meter six thousand nine hundred seventy two, and divide it by its standard error eight hundred fifty seven. As a result, you would get this T stat eight point one. Okay, so this T stat reported usually in this statistical software, it is just the ratio of the regression coefficient and the standard error. Nothing more mysterious than that. And this T statistic is particularly useful for testing the hypothesis that, uh, that, uh, that uh, is this coefficient, uh, is the true beta coefficient actually equal to zero or not. So to make this, uh, this kind of testing then, then in practice, uh, for the significance test, uh, Excel or Stata or whatever software you might use, uh, calculates this t-stat directly for you, but you need to then, then compare it to the critical values of the, of the t-distribution to construct this acceptance region and uh, rejection regions. So now another thing that I hope that, that doesn't, doesn't con confuse you too much. So here is some... Um, so far, we have considered uh, the so-called two-sided test, where the uh, rejection region has two parts. So, so both the left tail and right tail of the of the t distribution are used for the rejection region. So, in the sense, we are comparing comparing that uh, that uh, how how unlikely this uh, estimated uh, es this point point estimate observed with the data is. Uh, given this null hypothesis, if the null hypothesis is true. Uh, so, so uh, and then, then there we have this uh, critical values, this uh, uh, CL and CR are then this uh, critical values of the T distribution. So if you take the critical value of the T distribution using Excel or, 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 or some statistical tables, then uh, uh, notice also that uh, for the sake of two-sided test, this uh, this uh, distribution is symmetric, uh, so so statistical tables indicate you the critical value on the on the right tail, the positive value. So the negative negative value would be then just the additive inverse. So it would be minus one times the critical value. So this is relevant. I come back to this slide shortly. But uh, for example, when you have these coefficients like uh, like for the number of bedrooms, we get the negative t statistic. And same is for the age of the apartment. So notice that the T statistic is always negative uh, whenever the coefficient is negative. And and that's 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 fine because if it is the ratio of the coefficient and standard error, standard error can never be negative. So so the T statistic is negative uh, whenever uh, whenever this uh, uh, coefficient itself is negative. Okay. So with the two-sided test. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the rejection <clears throat> rejection region has two parts, and indeed the test statistic can be negative. Uh, so if we get the critical value uh, from the from the right tail, we can also then have this uh, this uh, minus one times that value for the for the negative value. So in some cases. When, when it might be that we, we know in theory that, uh, that uh, deviation from the hypothesis uh, can be only one-sided. So it's possible to also state the null hypothesis, sorry, it's possible to state the alternative hypothesis as an inequality. So if, if we know that, uh, that this uh, true parameter value cannot be ever, ever, uh, greater than uh, beta asterisk, so it can be beta asterisk or small, then the alternative hypothesis can be stated as some kind of one-sided uh, one sided test. And notice here, then the difference, so then, then it would change this, uh, this uh, rejection region, because then the rejection region would be, would be only on the left tail of the distribution, so it's not anymore both tails, and then it also influences the critical value. Okay, 
So if we are sure that uh, that uh, that the deviation cannot be both positive or negative, so it can be only only beta asterisk or less, uh, then then this would be the one-sided test. Um, of course, it's also up, we we can also flip the sign of the inequality. So this uh, rejection region could be also on the on the right tail of the distribution equally well. But I don't consider that case now in the uh, just to not confuse you. Okay. So the difference between two-sided test and one-sided test is that in two-sided test we always say that uh, that uh, alternative hypothesis is just that uh, beta two is not equal to beta asterisk. But we do not say is it greater or smaller. Either e deviation to uh, positive or negative side are equally acceptable. But in one-sided test we are committed to 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 uh, only only uh, downward deviations or upward deviations. So then how does this uh, one-sided uh, or two-sided test affect the critical value? So I have here returned the same example to this uh, uh, single linear regression and, and different sample si sizes. So remember from the these critical values of the t-distribution that we considered earlier uh, in the case of the in the case of the confidence interval, of course, in the confidence interval, we also also uh, also divide this uh, this um, uh, in some sense the rejection region to the equally to the both tails of the distribution. So, if we would move to the one-sided uh, test, where where this uh, rejection region is is uh, assigned only to the left tail or only to the right tail, then also this would influence the Critical, critical value in some sense the, the size of this uh, this um, rejection region. So on this slide, I have also constructed then the critical values of the t distribution for the one-sided test. So notice now that uh, that for whatever sample size we have, uh, then the critical value of the one-sided test uh, is closer to zero. So with the sample size of twenty observations. It's 1.734, and then it gradually decreases as the sample size increases. But even with 5,000 observations, then the critical value remains uh, smaller than for the two-sided test. So, so this needs to be taken into account if you use the one-sided test rather than the, the rather than the two-sided test. So, so notice that uh, that uh, here here the point is that the critical value will be will be different. So I come back to the previous this uh, slide where we have this difference between the the one-sided and two-sided test. So then it affects this uh, this uh, depending on how this alternative hypothesis is stated. So in the one-sided test, this uh, rejection region on the on the left tail is much uh, much bigger. So if we, if we, um, uh, if if this deviation is downwards. Then it is uh, in that sense easier to reject the, the null hypothesis using the one-sided test. On the other hand, uh, if the deviation from beta asterisk is is to to uh, that 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 our estimated b two is greater than beta two, then it always counts as evidence in favor of the null hypothesis. So, however large uh, upward deviation we observe with the with the point estimate and the stated beta two, we always then conclude that uh, it supports beta two. If we make this kind of uh, uh, alternative hypothesis, okay. So that's that's good to know in the in the case of the of the one-sided and two-sided test. Uh, um, the impact of of one-sided testing is that uh, that uh, as I noticed, the critical value is closer to zero. So if this uh, this uh, alternative stated st hypothesis uh, is correctly specified so so if we if we utilize it correctly then it can increase both the size and the and the power of the of the test so uh, in in my mind uh, too often this uh, this uh, significance tests are relying on this kind of two-sided test which is the sort of default option in all the all the statistical software but if it is good good reason to believe that uh, that uh, for example the impact of uh, 
uh, size in square meters in the hedonic model of housing market. Uh, so the impact of size, size in square meters on price cannot be negative, then it may be good to utilize one-sided test rather than two-sided test to, to rule out this possibility that there would be negative impact on the, on, on the, on the market prices. Okay. So in the next top theme, I will then, then consider an alternative way of, of, uh, of testing hypotheses using p-value. But before proceeding to that, I think it's a good idea to first, uh, first learn this t-test uh, thoroughly, because, uh, because otherwise it may be confusing that we can, to proceed to alternative uh, approaches to testing. Thanks for your attention, and we continue with the p-value next.